Hey YouTube, it is Pat again. I just wanted to go over quickly uh, a couple of things that I've been working on with the uh, MCP stuff for Claude. It's actually not specifically for Claude, but some of the limitations that I've mentioned on previous videos, I just wanted to dive into in terms of like using Claude as your, you know, one-stop shop for everything AI related. Claude, I think is amazing. Like the Sonnet 3.5 new is, is amazing large language model that's very helpful in many different areas and being able to hook up tools to it with mcp is is awesome like it's like really easy and i've already hooked up a bunch of tools you can see the other videos but for this particular video i wanted to talk about a couple of different issues so one is censorship um claude will not talk about anything political if you saw my video on generating an image i asked it to generate an image for um a car crashing into something and <laughs> it said sorry i can't show any violent like you know image or anything like that so you know there's a lot of violence in the world there's violence in the animal kingdom <laughs> I, I think it's funny that like if you're a large language model like you're just violence is just not on the table uh and other things that are not on the table so you know if you're doing a book report on i don't know abolitionist movement and slavery or something you may come across some racist documents does that mean that you know we just have a black box uh no pun intended for all things that we don't want to look at i don't think that's right and i also think like you know there's a lot of instances where you might want to just avoid censorship because there is a lot of stuff in the world that you, you know you can't censor so um, i'm not saying like we should just bombard every person on the planet with all types of things but anyway censorship is a big concern and claude is definitely censored uh, another thing is privacy so in my other video i talked about hooking up the gmail and google drive but there are privacy concerns so when i asked it to email my wife and i put in my inbox from my wife like you know explicit permissions granted you know go ahead email pat no problem um Claude still wouldn't do it. They would say, I can't verify the identity of your wife. And so therefore I can't send her an email. So it's kind of the, almost useless as a tool. Like, you know, you hook up the email tool, but you can't email anybody. So that is pretty stupid. Um, and the third one is the model. Just like, you know, maybe you don't always want to use Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Maybe if you're hooking up something else or you want to do some testing, maybe you want to use an open source model. Maybe you want to use your own fine tuned model. So for these three reasons, Claude being censored, Claude being like too overly concerned about privacy and, you know, Claude just uh, not being your model of choice, I decided to go ahead and create my own bridge. So here I'm using Olama, which is like probably the one of the most op um, popular open source alternatives to LLMs. And I had seen something online previously, and I don't want to dive into their um, code because I don't think it's that great. Um, and also they had only implemented it with Python. So this is a TypeScript implementation of a bridge between Olama and the MCP servers. So you don't have to have, you know, all your cloud MCP servers and you can't reuse them at all. Instead, in this particular example, you can write one MCP, which is then going to serve your data to Claude or to this bridge. Um, they should be modular. So this this is the bridges to allow you to connect your MCPs that you already have in Claude, but maybe for the particular reasons that I just mentioned, like privacy, censorship, and the model, maybe you just want to use a different model, a different language model. So this will bridge the gap between Olama and, um, and your MCPs. So you can use any model that you can get into Olama. Re I, I, I say in this that I was using Quen 2.57b because my my computer is limited by memory, so I have to use like a seven billion parameter or lower model. I mean, if I had, I could use a better one, but <laughs> this one works well. Quen 2.5 coder 7b instruct. Um, I also just recently got the ob obliterated one. So if you just search, you know, Quen 7b coder obliterate you'll get an uncensored model, which, um, you know, I had done some testing, but we're going to do some live testing in this video. So stay tuned. Uh, the, for the MCPs, there's another video I have that will just go through and install all of these for you. But that's a one Python script. So I don't know if you want to, you can just 
get you can get all of these MCPs from Node. Just install all these different packages. So it's really easy to get file system, Brave Search, GitHub, the memory, the Flux one that I made, um, the Gmail and the Drive one that I made. I will say the caveat to the Gmail and the Drive one is that you have to run um, you have to run an auth command. So that's something I wanted to cover in this video. Hope you can see my screen. Basically, it's Node, and then in my um, in my package, app hat rough, server Gmail drive dist index.js, you then have to put in the command auth. So like, you know, it's in the readme for the GitHub, which I'll share. So you, you'll should be able to find it, but you essentially have to authorize. So this what this is gonna do is it's gonna go in and it's going to um, it's gonna communicate with Gmail. So this is my Gmail. It's going to use the app that you set up in in gcp and that my other video covers this a little bit more extensively you have to give the app access to everything um you don't i think it's good to do this every time because i think the tokens expire so now it says authentication successful return to the console so what this has done is um this has put the credentials that are needed to to access gmail into my home directory, which will then be able to be found by um, by the bridge. So now to run the bridge, we're just in the, the bridge directory, npm run start. So you just clone the repo and then start it up. And this is what it looks like. So it's going through, it's gotten all the MCPs, it's got 35 uh, available tools. And now since it's hooked up to that uh, obliterated Thing. I can just send whatever email I send an email to patruff at gmail.com, just me, and put in uh, put in a list of five racial slurs. Now I'm gonna try to not read these out obviously on YouTube, but it should be able to uh, Oh no, it's having detected tool. Okay, send email. All right, so detected tool, send email, using bridge for tool, send email. And then I had to do a lot of stuff with Olama. So Olama was having a lot of issues. And I even have a script within the within the readme or within the GitHub repo. There's a restart Olama script because Olama at least on Windows, was awful in terms of the processes were just not exiting properly. Um, there were a lot of like open ports that weren't getting closed properly. So I had to write a lot of logic around Olama and Olama cleanup and all this kind of stuff. So it was a, kind of a huge pain in the butt. But if you're if you're on Windows inside this repo, um, let me see, Olama, uh, the repo is Olama MCP bridge. It's on my GitHub. You go to Pat Ruff and then Olama MCP Bridge. You can see, yes, this restart o Olama <laughs> uh, PowerShell script. It will just go through. It's going to find whatever process that has Olama in it, and it's going to force kill it. And it's also going to clean up the port because uh, Olama needs port 11434 for this to work. So if something is using that, it's going to kill the process, and then it'll start Olama again. So you. Sometimes you have to use this restart script and then you can use the bridge. So I just included that in there in case you need it. Um, but yeah, so the the tools this one has are file system, Brave, web search, GitHub, Google Drive, Gmail, memory, and then Flux. The other thing it has is a lot of testing. So I wrote, or I didn't write, but Claude wrote a lot of testing to basically check, you know, one to check Olama connectivity and that's that's very helpful when I was dealing with all the Olama stuff. Another set of tools were all the MCP tools. So to, like, you know, it'll go through and I mean, you could just NPM, NPM test and then like, it, this is like helping to work with all the JSON stuff. So there are some JSON issues. Essentially the way that Olama works as far as tool calling goes is it uses open AI format and the, the code for the MCPs was using a different format. So like tools and MCPs are different than the OpenAI standard. So 
as, like as part of the bridge, what we what we do is we convert the um, MCP JSON into what OpenAI would be expecting, and then use OpenAI. I'm pretty sure that's how I, I did a few different iterations of this. So actually, I can check the source code. I'll do it right now. Um, and I think that email should be sending. So this will give us some time to wait for the bridge. Oh, did it send? Maybe it didn't. Uh, email sent successfully. Okay, wait, so let's check my email first. We can always check on that other stuff later. So now I should be able to refresh my email. Here we go, list of racial slurs. Okay, I can't read these. They're very bad. One is the N-word. One is the F-word for people of a certain sexual orientation. One is a cracker. I think it's okay to say cracker. Cracker, cracker, cracker. Um, one is son of a B, and then the other one is a promiscuous woman. But these aren't all racial slurs, so I, uh, I will I would say prompt adherence may not be there. But um, yeah, it definitely sent the email, and I didn't say I didn't say any of those things. And I hope that my screen is small enough that you couldn't actually read that on the email. But it did send the email. So what it's doing under the hood is it's it's um it's sending things from the MCP. It's saying like, okay, we need to send an email. And it's giving the particular arguments. Um, and then the LLM is coming up with, it's filling in that JSON basically and saying like, okay, well, this, you know, we need, we we're sending to Pat Ruff and this is the body, blah, 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 like subject. It even put the title in. I didn't say to give it a title, but it just came up with its own title. So it's smart enough to know what should go into the JSON for the email. And then it just sends the email. So I'm not, like, now I need to like scroll through this so you can't see any of the, the bad stuff that happened. But then um, you can look and list the tools out in this MCP bridge as well, which I wouldn't recommend because I, I think it's like a lot. Here, list tools. You can see, oh man, there's like upload file, create folder, like it'll go send email. So, so for send email, it's an object with properties of two, subject, body, and all those things are required, which makes sense. And when I said like send an email to Pat Ruff, and then it's sending it from, it's always sending it from my email. Actually, I should look at who's sending the sender of this. I hope, again, I hope you can't see the screen from me, uh, from me to me, show details from patruff at gmail.com to patruff. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's sending as me because of the, the token is from me. But um, what was I going into? Anyway, so I'm just going to cut the video here and then just quit. But like this, this essentially is like a command line tool that you can, you like. I'm just talking to this tool. Um, send another email to Jenny seven two seven gmail dot com, saying I love you and provide a lot of sweet poetry for her. Um, I don't know about a lot. Like provide provide uh provide a sweet haiku that's uh, haikus are nice that's, just, that's a very structured for uh, sweet haiku for her all right let it should write a haiku and send an email oh send another email did it detect the tool sometimes if it doesn't detect the tool then it'll, it's not good but so let's send my wife a sweet haiku It takes a while. But anyway, um, I'm not going to be able to check her email on this one. So, uh, yep, there you have it. That's the tool to create, uh, oops, to bridge the gap between Olama and MCPs. So uh, I could comment on this more, but I think I'm just going to cut it for today and then go from there. But hope you enjoyed the video. And I've noticed people have been like subscribing to the channel. That's great. I, I really don't care. <laughs> I'm just uh, trying to make things useful for other people. And I guess I, I care that I want people to be uh, helped out. So kind of like, you know, if, if it's helpful to you, then, you know, continue watching the videos. But I'm mainly making them in case anybody is like, you know, 
I need to do X, Y, or Z. Like someone mentioned, actually, I'll go back to that comment. Someone mentioned in the comments that they wanted, they wanted a tool like this that, you know, could hook up to Olama and basically have um, MCPs that are running and that are allowing, you know, you to do things that Claude can't do very well. So I just showed you that Claude can get over the whole, or not Claude, that this uh, Olama tool can get over the censorship issue of Claude. But the fact that it can send emails to other people, um, that's another thing. Like I have already tested this. I already sent an email to my wife before and you know it is working. So like if you wanna use Gmail and not have to deal with any sort of over overly concerning privacy issues, you can use this tool. So this tool will help a, a good number of people, I think. And yeah, it's easy to use. It's just a little command line interface and that's it. So you just, you know, you'll type it. You'll type your request. You can go back and forth with the large language model, but you don't have to worry about uh, any of the issues that I mentioned at the beginning. See, sending call to MCP, tools called, results came back, email sent successfully. Um, that's it. Actually, I can, I can check. I can get into my, uh, I know my wife's email on my phone, so I can just check on my phone. I can see the, the haiku that it was written. Let's see. From the heart, from Pat Ruff. I love, oh, it's a haiku. I love you. Gentle, a gentle breeze. Nature's sweet song. Wow, that's a, that's a great haiku. Anyway, so write a haiku to your wife. <laughs> and have a great day and uh, see you later. Haiku from my wife. See? I don't know if you can see that on the... You probably won't be able to see that. I love you. A gentle breeze. Nature's sweet song. And scene. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody.